Okay, so we're going to look at some examples of using the normal distribution to answer problems, and hopefully this will clear up some of the difficulties, if you're having difficulties after watching the, the lecture. And also I'm going to go over the use of the inverse normal function on the calculator, because I don't think I did that in any of the, uh, the lecture slides in the, in the previous video. So I'll also put the, this worksheet, a link to the worksheet, right next to the uh, link to the video on straightermath.com. So the weekly amount spent on main maintenance and repairs for this company were observed over a long period of time, and apparently the distribution was symmetric and bell-shaped and approximately normal, with a mean of 400 and a standard deviation of 20. So I could write that like n parentheses 400 comma 20 to let people know that it's normal with a mean of 400 and a standard deviation of $20. Or I could write out that the mean is 400 dollars, I should be putting units on there, and the standard deviation is $20, and say that the distribution is approximately normal. So just make sure you're up on all of these, these notational pieces. Okay, so now I want to do some problems. So 450 is budgeted for next week, so I'm going to draw my picture with the mean being right in the center at 400. I'm going to mark off where 450 is, way over here. And I want to figure out what's the probability that the actual cost is higher than the budget. So that means I'm looking for this area under the graph. I'm looking for on any randomly selected week, what's the probability that my budget is higher than 450. So I'm, that means that I'm looking for the probability that X is greater than or equal to 450. And I should say somewhere on here that X is the budget for the week. So X is a weekly, the weekly budget. I'm sorry, my handwriting still hasn't improved much using the stylus. Uh, okay, so now all I need to do this is I've got to find the Z score that pairs up with that X value. I need to know how many standard deviations from the mean I am. So that's going to be my x value of 450 minus the mean is 400 over the standard deviation, which is 20. And if I do that out, I get 2.5. So now on my calculator, I'm going to do normal. I'm going to go second and then vars. Again, on my TI-83 or 84. Choose the normal CDF function. And remember, you pick the first z-score, comma, the second z-score, reading from left to right. So that means I want normal CDF of the z-score that pairs up with the x value of 450, which is 2.5, comma, the z-score that I'm stopping at. But I want the entire right tail of the graph. So that goes out to infinity. And I don't have an infinity button on my calculator, so I'll just put a couple of nines. And that gives me uh, the probability is 0 0.0062. So now I would want to write a sentence recapping what all of this means, but I don't really have room on my worksheet to write the sentence, so I'll, I'll just say the sentence here. So basically what this means is that about 0.62% of the time, the weekly budget is going to be more than 450. So I always want to just write a sentence explaining to somebody that doesn't know what all of this, this math means, kind of what what I've been doing, and I try to make it as simple and as easy to understand as possible. Great, so now let's move on to part B. How much should be budgeted for weekly repairs and maintenance in order that the budget amount be exceeded only 10% of the time? So this is kind of the inverse problem of the first problem in the sense that if I draw my picture, 400, the mean is still in the middle. Now in this problem, I know the area under the curve, I know the probability that I exceed this particular budget is going to be 10%. So I know that the area there is, is 0 0.1, 0 0.10, that I'm only going to beat that particular budget 10% of the time. But I don't know what that budget is, that particular x value. That's what I'm solving for. So in this case, I don't need the normal CDF function because the normal CDF function gives me the area under the curve that I'm looking for, but in this case, I already know the area under the curve. So I want to use the area under the curve, and I want the calculator to tell me what the z-score is. So I'm going to use the inverse normal function, which is under second vars, uh, option three, inverse norm. 
So I'll write this one out, inverse norm. But now the calculator reads from left to right, so I need to write, I need to plug into the calculator, I need to, into the inverse norm function, how much area is to the left of my particular x value, which is going to be 0.9. So that gets a little bit tricky that you need to plug in how much area is to the left of the x value in question because the calculator reads from left to right, and that will give me a z-score of 1.2816. That is my z-score. So now I just need to take that z-score and then convert, find the corresponding x value for that z-score. So I'm just going to do the formula. Uh, z, which is 1.2816, equals x minus the mean, which is 400, over the standard deviation, which is 20 multiply both sides by 20 and then add 400 to both sides and I get that $425.63 is X. And then again I would want to write a sentence recapping what I actually solved for here. So if I made the weekly budget $425.63, I would only go over that budget 10% of the time. So that's, that's something that somebody can understand even if they have no training in statistics. Okay, so let's scroll down. Let's look at 2 and 3. So now we've got the grade point averages of a large population of college students are approximately normal with a mean of 2.4 and a standard deviation of point eight. Okay, so now uh, I'm just you looking at a slightly different uh, normal population here. So now in this case, my random variable, I'm going to use a different letter other than, other than x. I'm going to use g because we're talking about GPA. So g is a student's uh, grade point average. And the distribution of G is normal with a mean of 2.4 and a standard deviation of 0.8. So I want to know what percentage of the students have a GPA that's higher than 3.0. I'll draw my picture here. Here's the normal distribution with the mean of 2.4. And I want to know how many students had a GPA that was 3 or higher. So 3, that's a little bit more than one standard deviation away. 3 would be like out here. So I'm looking for what is that area, what is that probability? What are the chances if I pick one random kid that their GPA is higher than 3 at this particular school, or at this particular, uh, from this large population of college students? So I'm looking for the probability that G is greater than or equal to 3. So I need to find the z-score that pairs up with this particular g value. So my z-score here is going to be g minus mu over sigma. So notice the formula did not change here. The only reason that the formula is not x minus mu over sigma is because I'm calling my variable g instead of x. So there's, this is not a new formula. It's just, it's just that I named it a different, I named it a different letter. So just don't be confused when you see different letters in the formulas. That doesn't mean it's a different formula. It just means you're calling your variable a different letter. I'm using g instead of x. So my z-score here is going to be 3 minus 2.4 divided by 0.8. And that is going to be... 0.75. So now to find that area, I'm going to do normal CDF of the first z-score, which is 0.75. That's the z-score that pairs up with 3 right on the boundary there. And then I'm going all the way out to infinity, so I'll just do a couple of 9s. And that gives me 0.2266. So make sure you've got the details on like you're actually writing the probability statement that is pairing correctly with that, with that area, and so on and so forth. So my sentence here, again, I don't have room to write the sentence, but my sentence would be, for this particular large population of college students, about 
2.66% of them have a GPA of higher than 3. And for our last question, if the students with a GPA of 1.9 or less are forced to go into academic probation, what percentage of students should the dean expect to be in this predicament? Okay, so I'll draw my picture. 2.4 is in the middle. Now, in this case, GPA of 1.9, so that is less than the mean. So just by looking at the picture, I know that this answer has to be less than 50%. Because 50% 50 of the students in this population have a GPA of less than 2.4. I'm only looking for the probability that they have less than 1.9. So what, what's... What's the probability that a randomly selected kid has a GPA less than 1.9? Same thing as saying what percentage of kids in this population have a GPA less than 1.9? So let's figure it out. So I need the z-score there. So my z-score is going to be g minus mu over sigma. So in this case, it's going to be 1.9 minus 2.4 over 0.8. Now, it totally makes sense that my z-score is negative because, remember, the z-score is the number of standard deviations you are from the mean. And this x value of 1.9, it's to the left of the mean. So the z-score should be negative. It's negative 0.625. And make sure when you're doing this on the calculator, if you do this in one shot on the calculator, make sure you put parentheses on the numerator or else you might get uh, the wrong z-score. If you do it in two steps, like if you take the 1.9 minus 2.4, get that answer and then divide by 0.8, then you'll be all set there. So now I'm looking for the probability that somebody's GPA is less than or equal to 1.9. That is going to be normal CDF of negative infinity. So I'll just do negative 9999, comma, the z-score that pairs up with 1.9, which is negative 0.625. And that equals 0.2660. So what does that mean? That means that about, my sentence here would be about 26.6% of students, of these college students from this particular population, would be expected to go on academic probation because their GPA is a 1.9 or less.